Good morning and welcome to our daily word and prayer. My name is Tom Short, so glad to have you along with us today as we get in the word of God and allow it to transfer, transform the way we think and what we think is important in life. I have a question for you today. Who was Epaphroditus and how did this guy make it in the Bible? Have you ever wondered that? You know, there are lots of names in the Bible of people who you wonder, well, what did they really do? I mean, this is the word of God. This is something that lasts forever. Epaphroditus is a guy that we know very little about, but we're still talking about him 2,000 years later. He made it into one of Paul's epistles, and now we're talking about him today. Who is he? And what important lesson do we learn from people like Epaphroditus and others that you wonder, how do they even make it in the Bible? Well, I think the answer will be encouraging to you. So let's jump right into it. We're in the book of Philippians. A special welcome to you today. If you're new, I'm so glad you're here. I hope you will join our community. We come here every day at 8.30 a.m. live in the morning. And that, but we're here that you can watch later in the day or even listen to the podcast. So we get the word of God into us. And we want it to get deep to within our soul. We don't want to just know it in our mind, but we want to apply it. Let it inspire us. Let it encourage us. And let, us trans, let it transform us into being the victorious champions for Christ that he created us to be. Let's jump right into Philippians. Here we go. We're in Philippians chapter 2. And Paul is writing and he says this. I thought it necessary to send you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger and minister to my need, because he was longing for you all and was distressed because you had heard that he was sick, for indeed he was sick to the point of death. But God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but also on me, so that I would not have sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore I have sent him to you all the more eagerly, so that when you see him again, you may rejoice, and I may be less concerned about you. Receive men like him, receive him then in the Lord, with all joy and hold men like him in high regard because he's come close to death for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was deficient in your service to me. Epaphroditus evidently was from the church in Philippi. And remember this whole letter, what prompted this letter, it's kind of a long thank you note that he wrote because they sent a financial gift to him. And evidently, Epaphroditus was the person who delivered the, the gift, the money. We see this in chapter 4 where it says that he was the messenger who brought this along, this, this offering, this pleasing sacrifice, Paul calls it in chapter 4. So Epaphroditus was someone who had brought this gift to Paul. Paul was in jail in Rome, and so he brought it from Philippi to him. Probably a dangerous journey, but he had protected it, he delivered it, and Paul was able to be blessed by that financial gift. And yet, Epaphroditus, what is he? He's kind of like you might think of him in more modern day. as like the postman. Well, maybe, maybe a little bit more than that. You might not even know your, your, who brings your uh, mail to you. But Epaphroditus, Paul went deeper. He said he's a brother in the Lord. He's a fellow worker. He's a fellow soldier. They, had a, they, were, they, they too must have had this oneness of spirit that we saw Paul had with Timothy. And in the process of delivering this gift, somehow he must have gotten sick. And we don't know what kind of sickness it was. It probably was more than just a basic cold. And uh, it was probably something, you know, that, that, I don't know, maybe he had some sort of dysentery and the traveling and the food he ate, going to a different, different place. We don't know what it was, but it says it must have been pretty severe because it says that he, he came close to death. And he was distressed that the people back in Philippi had heard about his illness. And they were worried about him. They were concerned about him. What's happened to Epaphroditus? And I hope he's okay. And so Paul said he's recovered. If he hadn't, I would have had deep sorrow in my heart because I love the guy so much. And I know you would have had sorrow. And God had mercy on him. And God healed him. God made him better. And he says, uh, and, and, and so I'm sending him back so you can know his condition. But what strikes me is what Epaphroditus, dare I say, 
it would almost seem like he had kind of a not that significant of a role to play, you might think. I mean, I can understand why Paul's in the Scripture. I mean, look at the things Paul did. Paul planted churches. He traveled the world. He made all these converts. He wrote Scripture. I can understand why Peter's in Scripture. He did the same thing. He was this mighty apostle, led many to Christ. Did He was on the front lines. He was, he was preaching the gospel. He, was, uh, he wrote Scripture as well. He was, you know, uh, his interactions with Jesus obviously are a treasure to explore. But Epaphroditus, I mean, he delivered, he delivered the mail. He delivered a gift. He, de- he delivered, he brought something, and of course it was quite difficult to do, but he, he took what others might not even have noticed. But Paul noticed it, and Paul was grateful, and Paul valued that work, and Paul included him in this letter, and as a result, we're talking about him today. But I'd like to add, it wasn't just Paul who noticed him. Evidently, God did, because we believe, we believe Philippians is part of the Holy Scripture, inspired by God. That's what we believe about the Bible, that, that even though Paul wrote, wrote it, he was inspired by God or led by God to write this, and that every part of the Scripture, every jot and tittle, every word, is what God intended to be in there. And so what we see here is that God notices, and that's where we should take courage from. That's why Epaphroditus made it in Scripture, because we're reminded by this that God notices the people who serve, who serve quietly, who serve behind the scenes, who aren't maybe as obvious and noticeable as the Pauls and the Peters, the Jesuses, the prophets, and so forth. God notices, and I want to encourage you that God notices what you do. Now, you're not going to make it in Scripture. I'm not going to make it in Scripture. Scripture's completed. You and I are in the book of life, and we can be reminded that whether we do something that people notice and is, is public, or whether we do something far more private, God notices. I would imagine that what Epaphroditus did was somewhat secretive. I mean, probably the Philippian leadership, I'm sure, knew he was carrying this money to Paul. Paul obviously knew when he received it. But when, when Epaphroditus was traveling, be it out on the road or on a ship or wherever he was, I doubt he was advertising that he had all this money with him. I wouldn't, you know, <laughs> you don't want to be robbed. And he probably, who knows, he might have been by himself or with a small group of people, but it was dangerous. And so I'm sure that he was doing what he did quietly, secretly, privately, to deliver this gift. But God noticed. Paul noticed. In in Hebrews chapter 6, we read this. For God is not unrighteous. Excuse me, God is not unjust. So as to forget your work and the love which you have shown toward his name and having ministered and in still ministering to the saints. Your service to the people of God Epaphroditus' service to Paul and service on behalf of the Philippians, your service to God, to God's people, and serving God's people, helping God's people, ministering, the same word, ministering, serving, same word in the Greek. God notices. And God won't forget. He wouldn't be so unjust as to forget the kindness you show towards his children, the service you show towards his children, the love you show towards God by serving God's children. That's how things work here on earth. God is the source always. God is the one behind it all. God is the strength. But God uses people to show his love towards other people. God uses people to serve other people. Let me assure you, God notices when you serve. Jesus said, if you give a cup of cold water to someone in his name, you won't go unrewarded. And, and the writer of the Hebrews reminds us that God would be unjust if he forgot what you did for others. And so, my friends, do you love God? I'm sure you do. Demonstrate that love in serving others. And as you do, as you do, the story of Epaphroditus and him being included in Scripture reminds us that God sees and God rewards. One final thing about Epaphroditus here at the end, he says, 
Receive him then in the Lord with all joy and hold men like him in high regard. Again, how interesting. Why would you hold him in high regard? We don't know that he ever, you know, led a church. We don't know that he was ever in a leadership role. We don't know that he was ever like a publicly preacher of the gospel as Paul. But Paul said he came close to death for the work of Christ. He was an all-out servant. He didn't let, you know, his illness hold him back. He went all the way for the Lord. And in this case, he was, again, delivering a gift. He wasn't being martyred. He wasn't being burnt at the stake. We'd hold martyrs in high regard because they suffer as the conviction of their faith. But his sickness and his suffering, his coming close to death, was to simply to complete the work God had given him to do. He was going to be faithful. And he wasn't going to let sickness, even to the point of death sickness, prevent him from finishing and completing what God had called him to do. Shall we say he, he had a, 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 a toughness about him. He had a conviction about him. He, he was a guy who kept on going and he completed his work. Let's you and I be like that. Let's complete the things God has called us to do. If it gets tough, even if it takes a toll on us physically, let's do it. Let's finish the things God has called us to do. And as we see others doing that as well, continue to labor for the Lord, even when it's difficult, even when there's obstacles, maybe even when they're sick, let's hold men like that in high regard for their service to Christ. God does. Paul did. He encouraged us to. God won't forget it. Let's not, let's us not forget their service either. Let's honor them for it. Shall we pray about it? Father in heaven, I pray today for us that we would be like Epaphroditus. I pray that we'd be faithful with responsibilities entrusted to us. I pray, Lord, that even if it becomes difficult or there's obstacles we face that we weren't expecting, even if we uh, get sick or it takes a toll on us physically, Father, that we would be people who finish and complete the work you've called us to do. And I pray, Father, that we would also, when we see others who do that, men and women who serve and who are faithful and, and who do what you've called them to do, even when it's tough and it's help us, Lord, to hold them in high regard, to honor and respect the work that they do. I think of those who serve behind the scenes, those who serve and it's not seen by anyone, maybe but you and maybe a couple of others. But Lord, there are people who help make it happen. And I pray that those people, we would hold them in high regard. And I want to thank you, Lord, for the people even in my life who help me be more successful, who help me have a, a more fruitful life. I thank you for them. And I thank you that you're not so unjust that you don't see it the love they've shown towards you as they've helped me. And I pray, Father, that, that, that uh, you just give us more and more of that spirit, all of us, towards people that we serve. We love you by serving others. We bless you today. We thank you that this can be a day that we serve and love and make a difference for eternity. And for this, we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hey, thank you for being with me today. Don't you love the Word of God? It's encouraging. There's Every bit of it has something in it for us. So I would get in the Word of God every day. And I, like I said earlier, we come here every morning at 8.30 in life. I hope you will join us. If you get in the Word of God and allow the seed of God's Word, you never know what Scripture might make all the difference in your life. So be here consistently. Come here regularly. Fit this into your schedule. Make it a part of your daily routine. Get in the Word of God. And let God's Word change and transform your life. If you're new, subscribe to the video, uh, like the video, share with your friends, post on your social media, and all of us, let's be doers of the Word, serving God, serving others, loving God by serving others. Amen. God bless you. I love you. And to meet tomorrow, you have a wonderful day. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.